she's here <laughs> guys i'm so excited my pat mcgrath mothership 10 moonlit seduction just arrived in the mail and i have to say the shipping was pretty pretty good i know shipping is a hot topic of pat mcgrath because she's known for having absolutely horrific shipping okay <laughs> i got really good shipping when i lived in maryland because i was you know just a few hours away from their distribution center but they would never send me like tracking info or anything it would just kind of show up so i was nervous to see what it was going to be like with me living all the way down in florida and not as quick but I got a shipping notification the next day and it, we ordered this on Friday, it's now Wednesday. I'm very happy with the shipping experience. It seems like we've gotten it together a little bit, right? Now if you want to know my initial thoughts on this palette and the color story, I'm going to link below my shopper drop on this palette. I went over all of the details that she gave us at the time and my first impressions of just looking at it. So <laughs> I wasn't that excited about it if you saw that video, but I'm super excited have it in my hands and just see what we are working with. If you're new here, I collect Pat McGrath palettes. The Mothership palettes really started it all for me. So it's always a big deal when a Mothership palette launches because she only launches these once a year and let's take a look this is the big 10 so here is what the packaging looks like at the current moment you are only able to pick this up on the Pat McGrath Labs website it is $128 so it's the same style box that all of the motherships come in okay hear me out um I'm ready for something different with the packaging right a different outer box not just this lady right here I like it but now they're starting to look kind of similar to me, especially since she has a lot of rose palettes. So a lot of them have the rose outer carton, so it's harder for me to like decipher them when I'm pulling them out. Just being picky. <laughs> and then here is the back of the palette. The palette is made in Italy and it has an 18 month shelf life. It is still currently available on the website if you want to pick it up. Okay, big reveal, who's ready for it? I've already taken a peek, I'm not gonna lie. I just wanted to make sure nothing was broken and so that you guys wouldn't see my depression. <laughs> so here we go. Same typical mothership black lacquered packaging in the back as well. And here is the palette itself. So here are the lights way down so that you can see. Honestly, it's a much more rich palette than I was anticipating. It looked a little bit brighter, I feel like, online, but in person it still is quite rich, and I think it's gonna work really well for a very wide range of skin tone. So you'll see right away we have three mattes, and then it looks like, okay, it looks like these two are the shimmer shades, and I was unsure if this was gonna be a blitz shade, and at least by look, it looks as though it's a blitz shade, right? The big kind of powwow shade is right here in her recent Mothership palettes. She's been adding one or two shades that will kind of stand out in the palette. There's nothing overly glittery in here. So in the Utopian Dream, which was the palette that came out last year, there were super glittery formulas. And I thought they were going to be in this one by the look of the promo pictures, but they're not. Not saying that these aren't glittery, but let's just swatch them. Let's see what we have to work with, right? I'm first going to swatch that first quad in the palette. So we have Intense Glow, which maybe could work as a highlight, right? And we have Rosewood Romantique, which is right next to it. Beautiful swatch. It has some warmth in here. And then we have Extreme Nocturne, which is quite cool. I was worried that this palette would pull very warm, but there's a mixture of warm and cool tones in this palette. So this is a nice kind of cool gray brown. And then here's the Shimmer Bronze Devotion. Nothing special in the Pat McGrath line, but certainly really smooth, really clean. Really like the way that this looks. So this is the first quad. You could certainly get a good look with this. I'm going to go ahead and swatch Plum Cabaret right here because I want to get all five of these together now this looked like another rosy shade it definitely has more purple in it so I want you to take a look it's not as peachy pink and rosy as we thought it looked in the promo pics this definitely has more warmth and red in it and this has a little bit more purple in it so these two shades we were like ah pomegranate on the promo pics they don't look quite as rosy in person which i'm happy about but i'm not saying these shades are still unique she still has a lot of shades that look like these but it's not 
pooling as rosy as I had anticipated, which it's good, I guess, right? Okay, so it looks like she had five Blitz Astro shades as opposed to the normal four. Normally, it's just these four. I think this is a Blitz shade. This is Platinum Dusk. Yeah, this palette is definitely much cooler than I anticipated. Look at that. I don't even know if this is a Blitz Astro shade. I mean, I guess it kind of is, but it's not one of the glittery ones. You know, it's just a really, really metallic one with microfine glimmers, but nothing overly glittery. That's a gorgeous shade. Okay, let's give VR sex, sexist, sexist, sexy, sex, sexy. Okay, <laughs> VR sexy. This is that special shade, and you can kind of see on my hand it has that like blue brown shift to it, kind of similar to Mac Club. If you're familiar with that shade, it's not a new or innovative chrome shade, but. It's very pretty. Let's see how she swatches. I mean, this still has that very special oomph to it that Pat McGrath oomph. You can get a better look here at the shift. So pretty. This is making Platinum Dusk look a little dull compared to how shimmery the shade is. Okay, now we're talking. These are really the blitzy shades. So this one right here is Blitz Venus. Then we have Astral Gold Lust. And then we have Astral Lilac Aura. Okay, now that we have these four swatched, suddenly the shade isn't as <laughs> blitzy or special to me. This is like a normal metallic. But these shades, you can really see the reflection on them, and they are gorgeous. I think they're a little bit closer to one another than I would prefer. Like these two shades, yeah, champagne, gold, and clearly like a lilac silvery shade. They read kind of similar, I think, just because of how metallic they are. I don't know. We'll see how these apply. But being up front here, I mean, it's gorgeous. As with every other Pat McGrath palette, even if I talk my ish about the initial promo picks, they always turn out to be prettier in person. Am I jumping for joy on this color story? No. You can get literally all three of these mattes in her palettes already. You can get a shade similar to this. Definitely this in her palettes already. Here, you can probably get something similar, but these are a bit more icy, I feel like. Anyways, I'm excited. They are still gorgeous. Let's see what we can do. As you guys know, with my looks, it's kind of a vomit of all of the colors on my eyes so that I can put them next to each other so I can see that they look different on the eyelid or if not, so that I can see how everything applies. So I already have some ideas up my sleeve for some looks that I want to create. I'll share with you in a second. But for now, I kind of just want to show you how everything is laying on and how they're looking next to one another. I know sometimes I get comments that, you know, you want to see the pretty look. But honestly, you guys, in this review setting, it's really important for me to compare shades next to each other. Because I don't want redundant shades in a palette that has only 10 shades. And it's $128, right? We want each shade to have a purpose. <sighs> so just some ideas for looks. If you need some inspiration... This shade right here is the perfect crease shade with the VR shade. This shade right here, I would love to see with the platinums and the lilacs together. And then the reddish shade over with the golds would be really pretty. So that's kind of the vibe and looks that I would go for if I weren't trying to put almost all of the shades on one eyelid. So I'm going to use some Sydney Grace brushes. And I'm going to start off with the plum shade right here. I do like this shade. I don't have an issue with it at all. But I don't really care for the matte transition shades such as this one and the reddish one that she added in this palette. I feel like there would be other colors that would have worked better. And not only that, she has these exact crease shades in all of her other palettes. And at this point, kind of bored with it, kind of sick of it. I don't mean to be negative. The quality on them, as you can see, is really great, blending out so nicely. But in the palettes that came out over the holidays, there was like two or three matte shades and they were all in that warm, reddish, corally, rosy family. And we have that again, our only transition shades, minus the cool toned charcoaly color, are once again reddish, purpley tones. And I just don't like it for every look. I rather 
her have put in like a deep chocolate brown and then like a neutral transition shade. I'd prefer something colorful. I think a dark green would have been really neat in here. But with these two shades, I'm just not feeling them in here. I just, we have this combo in just about 75% of the Pat McGrath palettes. There's only 10 shades in here. I want it to stand out. And these, I don't necessarily know how well they go with the colors in here. Like they go fine, they're semi-neutral shades, but I just want something different. I don't know. Let me know if you feel the same. I'm just being honest here. So I am putting the reddish shade right beside the purple so that you can see how they compare. You can definitely see the different undertones, but honestly, they're a little bit too close for my preference because once you start blending them, they'll look very similar. So again, what I'm talking about, it is a $128 palette. You only have 10 shades. I want them all to stand out on their own and they're too much of a similar vibe. They need to be different depths at the very least. These are the exact same depths, but different tones. But once you blend them out, it really is kind of hard to tell the difference between the two. So that's a little disappointing for me personally, but we're gonna leave it at that. The quality on them is very, very nice. We're gonna go in with an angled brush and we're going to go into this shade. Now I like this shade. I feel like it's a great color for this palette. I really feel like it goes seamlessly with all the blitz shades. I don't feel the same about these two. I just don't think they go as well with the blitz shade. Y'all know I love Pat, my favorite brand of eyeshadow palettes, and I'm gonna use the heck out of this eyeshadow palette just because of the formula but she's really played it safe too many times. And I was hoping, I think a lot of us were hoping for Mothership 10, that we'd get something a little different and not quite so safe because when the brand first came out as a longtime fan of the brand, you know, it was really artistic and different. And now that's not the case. That being said, this palette is really pretty. For somebody who doesn't collect Pat McGrath palettes, it still is a nice range of colors. It's not a bad palette in the least, so don't let my personal disappointment get in the way of you purchasing it if you like the color story. The quality in here is really nice, up to par with Pat McGrath. Please take that as a note. But I know I also have a lot of general Pat McGrath fans slash collectors like myself. I'm gonna tell you, for those of you who are collectors like me, that love the artistry of Pat McGrath, we're just not getting it with the brand anymore. It doesn't seem like Pat McGrath anymore. It's about money at the end of the day and they are selling these safe color stories. I'm gonna use the Intensifies Artistry one, by the way, while I'm sitting on my soapbox. <laughs> Um, you know, it's, it is about selling product. It is about making money. And obviously her more natural palettes are selling very well. So she keeps doing this, but dang, I wish we could just have a pop of blue and green in this palette, you know? Okay. So <laughs> now we're going to go into the Blitz Astral Lilac shade. I do like to use a glitter base. For these shadows, you can go without, but this helps with longevity. As far as the shadow not falling out as the day goes on, I love a lilac shade. I think this one is really pretty. There was a lilac shade in Hue Topian Dream. It was a lot more glittery. This is more toned down, but very, very pretty. I think it's a great addition to the palette. And then for review's sake, I wanted to use this glitter right here that's gold. Well, it's not necessarily glitter, but... I was worried that these shades would look a little too close to each other, but they definitely look different. So I'm happy about that. And then of course we gotta use this shade. Now this is a shade that on an everyday basis, I would like to wear all over the lid alone with just a crease color. And yeah, you want to give it its own moment all over the eyelid. But she's super duper pretty. I like this better than Sextra Terrestrial. Personally, if you have a dark base underneath, that is so pretty. Again, not the most unique multi-chrome shadow. If a brand is multi-chrome, they typically do a shift that is like this one. But Pat McGrath does it well, as expected. So pretty, and I think it's so interesting, the mix of the Blitz shades that I have on my eye right now. So gorgeous. And I just want to show you this shade right here. I'm gonna pop this in the inner corner. And again, I do think this one is a little bit close to the gold that I put right here, but nothing crazy. The thing I have to say about all of the Blitz shades, minus the VR shade right here, is these three, again, they're kind of in that similar, very metallic light depth. So because they're so metallic and so light, the differences on the eyelids are kind of subtle. And then I'm gonna go in with this plum shade right here. 
like I said, I do like this shade. I think it's very pretty. I wish it was something else because we do have this from Pat McGrath already, but it's a very pretty shade. But I really, <sighs> my disappointment is coming from these matte shades. I'm tired of having shades like these in my crease for every Pat McGrath palette that I use. <laughs> <laughs> it's making each look look more and more similar than I do from palette to palette. Okay, and then I'm using the charcoal shade, which is super necessary in this palette, which I really like. And I'm also kind of blending it up here as well. I wanted to try this shade right here, which is like a cooler platinum color. So nice. It's not a blitz shade. I've cracked that myth. But it's a really fabulous metallic shade right here. Very reflective. And then we want to use this shade, which she has in multiple palettes. I mean, I'm not saying it's a repeat shade. It's definitely more white-based than some ones that I've tried from her. But she has a shimmery white in a lot of palettes. Okay, and I'm going to stop that there. I know it's a vomit of colors. But once we get lashes on, it is going to look good. I promise you, Pat McGrath always pulls together with some liner and lashes. Um, and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this palette. All right, with liner and lashes, I told you everything turned out. It, it's so pretty, <laughs> regardless as any Pat McGrath look is going to be. I wanted to show you the palette next to Divine Rose 1 and 2. Because we were so worried about being this a rose palette, I thought it'd be nice to show you them side by side. So here is Divine Rose 1, and here is Moonlit Seduction. You can see the Blitz Astrals are a different formula. They're more glimmery. Not any real dupe for dupes. The top colors right here of the shimmery whites are similar, different undertones though. We have more of a reddish shade as opposed to the chocolate brown. The matte plum shade in the Moonlit Seduction has a shimmer version in the Divine Rose shade. But I would say they're different enough to warrant. And then here is Divine Rose 2. Now you'll see Divine Rose 2 has a lot more of a pop color here. And even though we were sick of roses by the time Divine Rose 2 came out, at least there's like pops in here. I would say the plums kind of look similar. Honestly, the two matte shades look similar. I'm gonna swatch those. So here are the two matte shades from Moonlit Seduction. Here are the two matte shades from Divine Rose 2. So this is much more peachy. I would say the plum shades are pretty close. Honestly, not terribly far off, if we're being honest here. Again, that's what I'm talking about. Pat McGrath always has these shades of mattes in her palettes, and you don't have many other shades to work with. So I hate how the mattes she has all seem to be the same. <laughs> So then they all have to be the matte transition bases to the looks. So the looks end up being quite repetitive. Then here's the VR shade from the Moonlit Seduction. And here is Divine Rose 2 Sex Terrestrial, which are very, very different. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. As you can probably tell, Moonlit Seduction is not my favorite. However, it takes a while for me to get to know a Pat McGrath palette. There are palettes that I've had similar feelings about as I do with the Moonlit Seduction. I ended up just reaching for them a lot. Divine Rose 2 is one of those examples. I had my things to say about this palette and it ended up becoming one of my most favorite and most used. So I definitely want to give this the test of time to see if I do actually end up reaching for it because I do really like the Blitz shades that she has in here. Overall, if you like the colors of the palette, you're not a Pat McGrath collector and you're looking to pick up a Mothership palette, I think this is a very, very good one. The mattes are really blendable. The shimmers are absolutely stunning. It's a great quality palette as the Pat McGrath motherships are. If you're a collector like me, which I know a lot of you are, is this one exciting, unique in the collection? Not at all. So as a collector, I'm coming from a stance of like slight disappointment. But as I said before, I've been surprised by Pat McGrath palettes. It normally takes me some time to see how much I'm reaching for them, the different looks that I could get. I'm just here to give you a thumbs up on the quality and hear your guys' thoughts as well. So let me know down below. Did you pick this palette up? Are you excited for it? Did you try it out? What do you think? And with that being said, I'm gonna check out of this video. And by the way, my family is coming for three weeks, so my parents are coming the first half, and then Jose's parents are coming the second half of those three weeks, so I'm not going to be doing daily uploads most likely anymore for those three weeks. It's not that big of a deal. I'll still be uploading, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. Be prepared for no more daily uploads over the next three weeks, but I definitely will get up what I can when I can. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.